Hi, Francois. Hello, Sonic State. Hello, welcome I, back. Yeah, happy to see you again. Yes, you too, as always. And your ever-growing system. I mean, you've got quite a number of modules now. Um, you know, I'm kind of blown away. And uh, recently I did something with the uh, Griffin's Claws, which is a really cool module. But you've got three, I think, that you're going to show us today. Yeah, so actually we had uh, <coughs> one really new thing, which is a Lancer's Latch. So it's a snare drum synthesizer. So maybe let's hear it a, lo a bit. Sure. So it's a um, snare drum module. Yeah. Uh, it's a digital snare drum module. You have uh, different engines. So the first one is a typical analog. So for all the models, you have a decay and pitch control. Then you get the timbers and color, which affect um, mainly the number of harmonics and the yeah, timber of the sound. So typical analog like tier 808, 606, 909 feeling, sign with noise basically. <coughs> then we get the blend one which adds an impact and a ring. Oh. You can hear at the end. It's yeah. supposed to be a bit more realistic but yeah. we think it's a um, good electronic snare, not that realistic finally. But we have a physical modeling model uh, which is based on uh, delay networks and filters and noise. Then we get a FM engine with different modulators, operators with noise. So this is, um, <coughs> all the engines are set up, but we need a bit of remapping of the potentiometer and so on. And for the Super Boost, we came also with a fifth model, which is a granular oh. model. <laughs> so we're gonna, these are my keys, for example. Um, we're gonna add um, a simple snare with noise and uh, with white noise and a sign. Okay. And add of top on that this granular engine, when you can choose your sample bank and you have the density of the grains over here. Right. Then you get, uh, let's go back to the simple analog model, you get also an uh, effect section with different uh, compressor oh, or distortion. Cool. So you get a compressor, you also have a drive or distortion, you can set the amount of distortion over here. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is a AV distortion. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else? You also have a randomizer, so the randomizer allows to set an uh, amount of random for every parameter. Let's go for this one. Let me change the sequence a bit there. Let's switch the model now, and let's go maybe to... Physical or okay. This can be about humanizing, but this can also be about more making IDM stuff like real random. Like Absolutely. Everyone's like in modular. But I guess also if you use it very subtly, you can also just make a little bit of movement. Yeah, that's the idea drum. of humanizing the yeah. sound. So the um, the amount are set to have a very low ratings, uh, just so subtle variations to yeah. avoid to have two times the same snare yeah. sound. Yeah. At higher settings, what you heard, like right just now, it's more like it goes crazy in every Apex in every way. Yeah, Apex twin style, yeah. IDM style, yeah, yes. of course. Perfect. Um, you have also 256 presets, uh, select bus capabilities, and uh, preset CV input. And I think we will, yeah, we made the world turn about uh, the snare. Fantastic. And when's <coughs> this one going to be available? Uh, September. September. Yeah, and, and price? And, uh, price is the same as Archer's Rig, around 280, 285. Fantastic. Uh, is that Euro? Euro, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, Euros, right. Uh, yeah, um, right. Then we have the Ballista Blast, which is last year. We work a lot the Ballista Blast, so I will be a bit quicker on this. So it's a hybrid uh, digital analog synth voice. So we have digital VCO with the analog different type of filters like tuple, low pass, band pass, high pass filters, and uh, low pass inspired by the TB303. Um, so we have also uh, v analog VCA, analog LPG, and analog distortion. So the way it works is we have different engines, like the classic engines, it's all about mixing so and square together. So we have different way, like a sub, a dual, so unison, so you can switch to square thanks to the alt button. Uh, this will control the cutoff frequencies, resonance, one parameter for the VCO and the pitch. You can, of course, like in any Shackmat module, log the pitch and it became an octave switch. And you have an envelope that you can assign to any, para any of those parameters with a depth independent per parameter. It also affects the VCA, attack and decay for the envelope. 
Um, you have other models, uh, other engines. The other one is a wave table engine. So same thing, filters, and you have the parameter to change uh, the, the index of the wave table. And the last model is um, FM model. You get rid of the filters and you have different FM uh, algorithms with three macro controls. So we work quite a lot on the FM settings lately. So let me put back a bit so I can make you hear what's happening there. If you want to play. Yeah, let's, let's me draw on it first. Okay. And let's remove the distortion. There's a distortion going on there. So now we are a very simple, let's start with a very simple West Coast uh, type of FM with one modulator. So, as you can hear, we have a continuous modulator thing with a wave folder, for example. And when you press the alt button, you are in ratio mode. But unlike other ratio VCO, it's a continuous variation of the ratio, like kind of a cross-fading the modulator oh, to the yeah. camera. Oh, yeah, that's nice. And you can go to much complex sound with two modulators in series, for example, with a distortion here, two modulators in parallel, several mo carrier with modulators, and additive mode with tonal and non-tonal harmonics. Um, wow. It's a randomizer which can go to any parameter like in the Lanzo slash, yeah. a velocity input that can go to any parameter, 256 presets, and you have also, with the new thing from the Superboost, the capability to expand your ballista blast with additional modulation uh, voices. So this is a modulator which can be an LFO or an envelope. Oh. Uh, and you can have up to two modulators per uh, ballista blast. So and you have this this one here. Is this one here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So baby XP, so the ballista blast XP. Okay. Is this available now? Uh, September also. Those two with release uh, will be released together in September, and this yep. completes a range with a battering ram, archer's rig, lancer's blast, and ballista blast. You have uh, three parts, uh, like three modules: uh, snare, um, snare, kick, and i hat plus the synth voice. I suppose it's easier to ask, what does this synth voice not do? I mean, it's it's ram jammed, packed full of we, we, surprises <coughs> and modulation it's, and envelope. And yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a question, uh, Chakmat, you know, we, we're quite known to do like control modules and sequencing modules. Yeah. And when it comes to which sound should the module make, uh, we have so many uh, musical affin um, uh, different style we like. It's hard for us to choose this sound very industrial or very soft. So we try to have a broad range of uh, sonic territories to cover. Uh, so yeah, that's why cool. uh, same thing for the archers and the lancers. We try to have it like very broad in the terms of kind of music you can make with it. Yeah. Um, to sequence the ballista blast, something that will be released very soon is the uh, Bishop's Miscellany MK2. Oh, sorry. Can we, uh, what was the price on the expander and the ballista blast? Oh, uh, the ballista blast will be less than 400, and the expander will be less than 100 okay. per expander. Super. Um, so let me take a simple, yeah, simple sound here. Let's put a beat here and let's let's reset this. Okay. Uh, the drums we're hearing they're coming from these modules here. Yeah. Yeah. So. The Bishop Miscellany MK2 is uh, basically at its core, like the MK1, a CV gate recorder. So I can record simply a line, for example, from okay. the keyboard. Yeah. You can set the sequence from one step to 64 steps. You can have a clock divider, you have a root note, a scale, and so on. And then you have a process section. So what will do the process section? It's a lot of different process, typical process for the sequence slide gate lengths, uh, ratchet, vibrato. So you can just, let's say, let's go to the slide first. So you get a slide, you can hold it and play with a potentiometer if you want. But you can also record a slide. Oh. And so you can <laughs> add different, um, maybe let's go to the second one. So you can record on top of that sequence right. of uh, process. You don't need necessarily an external keyboard or an external sequencer to do that because you have also what we call the region section. And the region section allows actually to generate or regenerate your sequence. So there we got a random section. You can just do small intervention sometimes or just also record and create a sequence from okay. randomness. And you have different randomizer, arpeggiator. 
<laughs> All right. A pass control and knob recorder. So let's do our sequence with the arpeggiator, for example. And then we go into the region section. And the region section allows to regenerate with a range, for example. You also the speed. Rate. Slicer, remember, random slice, you know, all different settings, all different uh, algorithms to mangle the sequence. You have also a uh, memory of uh, SD card capability of sequence, a playlist with, uh, you can set all, you prepare a live set or have a, having song structures for your tracks, uh, two channels that you can be linked together and uh, it can be used as a in many ways, actually, generative, regenerative, uh, recording. You can also process external sequence with the process and the region. So you take your favorite sequencer and process through this module to uh, go to the other, I don't know, voices of your module. Right. Uh, select bus capabilities for a singable CV, and uh, I think we fantastic. We made the turn about this. Yeah. Wow, I love the uh, how quick it was just to record something in. I, you know, uh, we got this on the uh, Griffin's Claws as well, that, that ability to kind of just yeah. record and have things synchronized, playing back and things. So the challenge we had with the Bishop Miscellany, and that's why we release it only now, it's because we worked a lot of the UI to have a, it's a kind of um, deep module, but we wanted to keep it very simple for the yeah. users, yeah. To, to be very performative, to have everything accessible very quickly. Yeah. And there's a reason why during a year we tested different UI, testing a lot of things with the screens, which is a new thing for us. Yeah. And that's the reason why uh, one year after, finally, it's in production and going to be released yeah. in uh, three weeks. Three weeks? Three weeks, yeah. It's in production right now at the factory. And price? Price will be uh, 380, I think. Euros. Euros. Oh, yeah. Euro. yeah, yeah, yeah sure. perfect. Well, great. Another great addition. And that's quite a big step up from the previous version. You yeah, know, the I, addition I of the screen and all the extra... It was very similar. We're working on it since three years, actually. And right. like six different versions of the UI. It's yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, to, trying to have something performative and deep at the same time, which can do so many things, is always yeah. a challenge. Yeah. And we prefer to take time and deliver something... Absolutely. Per we think not perfect, because yeah, nothing is never perfect, but as much as we can, uh, good for performance. Great. It's really cool, yeah. You know, it's very, it is very kind of um, very easy to get quick results with it. But as you say, it is a complex mo um, module in itself. But I think you've made the process simple. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. always the difficult thing: having Th something quite complicated, thing, yeah. but being able to use it simply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's always a big challenge for yeah. this kind of modules. Yes. Yeah. Well, well done, and thank you for showing it today. Thank you very for passing by, and I'll see you very soon. I guess. Nice one. Thank you, mate. Yeah. Bye, bye.